so much for joining us. Uh, you might be listening on the FMAM dial, KSHP, the Occupied Democrats Network, the Washington Press Network, Twitter, TikTok, Twitch. I'm literally minutes away from getting into a Twitter spat with Dana Loesch's husband, by the way. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but boy, do we have a lot to get to and a lot to talk about today. My YouTube page at PTL Radio Show. You could also subscribe to the Occupy Democrats uh, page on Facebook for five bucks a month. And uh, of course, the hush money trial has begun. Jury selection is is going on, I believe, as we speak right now. We're going to give you updates on that and uh, why the prosecution is asking Donald Trump pay a fine. Uh, we'll get to that here in just a little bit. Republicans Many of them on the far right are blaming Joe Biden for this Iran missile strike. You can't make this stuff up, and I'm going to show you the hypocrisy in real time. Of course, it's Monday. We're going to be playing a little Governor Sununu audio for you in just a moment here because I think it's a microcosm of exactly where the Republican Party is at right now. Joining us on a Monday, wearing his very bright fluorescent yellow shirt, the vintage (laughs) yellow shirt, is our residential official liberal, which is Chris William Wynn. Yellow. Yellow, Numchuck. It's, it's, I would define this as uh, either tangerine or orange, right? That's, that's orange. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if you have color blindness, uh, Brian Shapiro, but yeah. But yes, great to be here, Brian, on a Monday. Great to see he's you. Already he's no, already arguing there. No, no. Okay, so. He's already arguing with me. He Numchuck, just got here. He just pointed out that you just, just, <laughs> it's the wrong color. Wait, you, you just described the wrong color. Very basic stuff. Okay. Not well, crazy. you know what? I don't look so at not the, argumentative. You're just wrong. Listen, okay, so, here, so yeah. I don't define anyway, people on color like you do. So anyway, yeah, great to be with you. Absolutely. Uh, you know, another very, very busy weekend, right? Yes, that, it is. What, what happens every Monday? We come in here, right? We have three. We have basically, you know, two days plus to discuss about what has transpired, yes. whether it's in politics, whether it's in pop culture, whether it's, uh, you know, interviews that have been done. Right. Yeah. And audio clips and video clips that we get a chance yep. to kind of band over. So it'd yeah. be great to get a chance to converse with all of you people out there. I'm pushing the limits as far as social media is concerned, as well as, uh, the, you know, the text lines across the board, whether it's on Facebook Live, whether it's on TikTok, whether it's on any of these platforms that we're on. So it's going to be uh, should be an interesting Monday as we get the yeah. week rolling here. On PTL. Going to give everybody an update on the uh, hush money trial, which has already begun today. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, I have some strong opinions on uh, this Iran missile strike and the hypocrisy on the far right blaming Joe Biden. We'll get to that. But I have to start with a, a right wing buffoon. There's plenty of them out there. Governor Sununu, who, by the way, has zero backbone. I put him in the category of so many of these other MAGA Republicans when you pin them in a corner. And George Stephanopoulos, say what you want. I know he worked in the Clinton administration and all that stuff. But he pins these Republicans and he, and he holds them to the fire, so to speak, for lack of a better term. So the conversation, Chris, yesterday is about Donald Trump. Because, as you know, Governor Sununu, when he was supporting Nikki Haley, he was very anti-Donald Trump. Threat to our democracy. In fact, it's Governor Sununu who said that. Donald Trump bears some responsibility uh, uh, helping an insurrection, so to speak, on January 6th. So listen to this first exchange when George Stephanopoulos is, and and this is, to me, such an example of where so many in the Republican Party are at today. George Stephanopoulos and Governor Sununu. Have a listen to this exchange. I'm asking whether you're going to be swayed by it. You're a governor. You're an elected official. I'm asking whether you're going to be swayed by it. Yeah, look, nobody should be shocked that the Republican governor is supporting the Republican president. You know what the real story is? The average American that has gone from Biden back to Trump, the average American that is feeling inflation and all these other issues that says, look, through all this, all this, whether there's a conviction or not, we want a culture change in Washington, D.C., and we'll continue to support the former, pres- former President Trump. That's the real story, right? That Trump is leading in the polls across America in, in a lot of these different polls. So no one should be surprised by, by my support. What the, I think the real discussion is, you know, America's moving away from Biden. That's how bad Biden has become as president. There's just no doubt about it, right? You can't ignore you inflation. Met- you can't ignore the border and say that, that these issues in the courthouse are going to be the one thing that brings Biden back in, into office. It's not going to happen that way. Okay, so what Governor Sununu is saying is, is not factually accurate. He's saying that all these Biden supporters are moving to Donald Trump. But here's where the conversation gets much, much worse, where Governor Sununu is lying And in this short 20-second clip, Governor Sununu is proven to be somebody with no backbone and a coward. Uh, George Stephanopoulos sets it up perfectly. Have a listen to this. 
America wants a culture change. So, 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 so just to sum up, you would you would support him for president even if he's convicted in classified documents. You support him for president even though you believe he contributed to an insurrection. You support him for president even though you believe he's lying about the last election. You'd support him for president even if he's convicted in the Manhattan case. I just want to say the answer to that is yes, correct? Yeah, me and 51 percent of America. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so let me. For time this morning. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Let me just start out by saying this, Chris, and Ryan, then you yeah. tell me what yeah. you think. Yeah. So first of all, that's a lie. <laughs> Donald Trump lost the popular vote in 2016. He lost yes. the popular vote badly in 2020. Now, if he's saying 51 percent of America supports Donald Trump, that's a lie. Maybe 51 percent of Republicans do, but he just said that more than half the country. Supports no, Donald Trump. No, it's not Trump. 51% of the Republicans. It's That's like what he's 90% saying. of Republicans. I know, but I'm just using this as a point. Yeah. He's saying 51% of the country support Trump. Well, That's uh, a blatant lie. Well, yeah. What but, is he talking about? That's not true. But people Where is he called getting out that all the from? time with, with their ridiculous statements when it comes to Republicans. And look, this is just another, this is par for the course, right? We use these phrases. We, we're going to use the word hypocrisy once again when we're talking about Chris Sununu, the, the governor, by the way, those of you that don't know, he's the governor of New Hampshire. Okay. We didn't really point that out but whatever but the point being is that yes there's numerous sununu is just the latest example of republicans that we've been able to put on the spot and call out their bs in real time right and point out exactly the hypocrisy that has engulfed america essentially when it comes to the republican party and the fact is also that maga has taken over the republican party there is people out there, right, Brian Shapiro, that you would define or that would characterize themselves as what? Old school Republicans, right? Republicans that we used to know. The ones that used to be Republicans, they used to be conservatives, right? They used to be about small government. That was their ideology. What has taken over the Republican Party? The MAGA wing of, uh, when it comes to the right has taken over the Republican Party, and therefore, what happens? You have people like Chris Sununu, whose father was also the governor of New Hampshire, okay, and John Sununu, you know, and is basically retired now, but these were actually real Republicans, and what do they have to do, Brian Shapiro? They have to twist themselves into pretzels constantly to make excuses or to uh, have descriptions why they need to support Donald J. Trump for president. So this is a large wing of the MAGA Republicans out there where it doesn't matter whether Donald Trump is a liable sexual abuser. It doesn't matter whether he's a convicted felon, could be convicted in the Stormy Daniels hush money case. Uh, he could be convicted in the classified documents case. Even a guy like Sununu, who openly admits to this day, and he's right, that Donald Trump bears responsibility in uh, inciting an insurrection. Sununu still believes that. He was asked in that interview whether he incited an insurrection, continues to lie about the 2020 election, which Sununu admits Joe Biden won a free and fair election. It doesn't matter to these Republicans because they hate Joe Biden that much that they would rather vote for a guy like that. So um, there's also uh, w reports, by the way, as we speak about yeah. Donald Trump that he's been falling asleep in the courtroom. I did hear those. Is he really? Uh, I did hear those reports. But anyway, not, not a lot of uh, not a lot of yeah. shut eye over the weekend or something. No. He's, he's low he's energy. Starting to get to him, my very, friend. Very is low energy. On? So, yeah. Chris, while all this is going on and we're going to get to the hush money trial, <laughs> um, obviously, Iran um, uh, attacked Israel. Uh, over the weekend, and Republican lawmakers have taken to social media l in just a few hours after this attack, dozens of ballistic missiles, and they've taken the opportunity to go after Joe Biden and blame Joe Biden. Um, let me, before I... Well, let's set it up and, and let's tell the public what the reason why. why. Why is the reason that Iran attacked Israel? The reason is what? It's because of the Syrian situation, right? The situation in well, Syria. Well, that's, yeah, that's what I was with, just going to... With gonna, the Republican Guard. Yeah, that's... So right. that... So let's be extremely clear. That was the reason why it took place. So, so, but so let's yeah, just, that's, so let's put that out there. Yeah, that, so that's what I was that's what I was going to get to. Uh, so I'm going to give you my well, opinions. Well, it's a very simple one sentence. I'm going to give you my opinions yeah. on on this whole situation. Then I want to read you some of the Republican statements blaming okay. Joe Biden. Uh, but yes, the, the the strike this in Syria from Israel um, was a response. Now, while I disagree with this response from Iran. My opinions might surprise some of you. Um, Iran, while if they had it their way, they would kill every Israeli if they could, and Israel would cease to exist. However, 
This missile strike was not to kill innocent civilians. They knew that after this missile strike that the U.S. and other allies would intercept these missiles and there would be little to no damage. They knew that. They did it as a response. So I don't believe in this situation Israel is doing anybody any favors if they respond in the way that I think they might, if that makes sense. Now, Joe Biden's also said that they have to be very careful in their response, and he doesn't want to be a part of it in that aspect. The good news is that the majority of those missiles were intercepted. There was very little damage. Nobody was injured. So that's the good news. Iran knew what they were doing. They don't want a war with Israel. They know they will lose. They did this as a response to say, hey, knock it off. And I'm not defending them, and I'm not defending their behavior by any stretch of the imagination. So that's what happened here. I don't know how Israel's going to respond. I'm not sure they know yet how they're going to respond, because they certainly haven't made it public. We will have to wait and see how it happens. Here's what I find despicable, Chris. The fact that Republican lawmakers on Capitol Hill are blaming Joe Biden for this. Senator John Barrasso out of Wyoming, a Wyoming Republican, he's on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He said President Biden's failure to stand firmly with Israel is playing right into the hands of Iran and its network of terrorists. By the way, that's a lie. Biden has stood firmly with Israel. I don't understand what this guy is talking about. Senator Lindsey Graham, who at this point, if you think this guy has any bit of credibility, then you're mistaken. He said the attacks would not have happened on former President Donald Trump's watch. He's such a tough um, guy, Brian. You didn't know that? Yeah. Donald Trump, he's the toughest guy out there. He, you know, Superman. People are just scared of him. He's Superman. Yeah. So here's what Lindsey Graham said, Chris. He said, so much for President Biden telling bad guys don't actually be an effective deterrent. Every time he says don't do it, they do. That's what he said on social media. So, social media. so brilliant, uh, brilliant there by Lindsey Graham's part. Tennessee Republican Bill Haggerty. I don't know if you heard of this guy. Uh, he's oh, yeah. also on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He said Iran's direct and unprecedented attack against Israel shows that Biden's Middle East policies have failed to achieve deterrence and instead enabled and emboldened Iran. So, so Biden has emboldened Iran. Uh, Tennessee senior Senator Republican Marsha Blackburn uh, invoked former President Trump, said under President Trump, Iran was broke. President Biden gifted them billions of dollars. By the way, that's not true. That he froze true. those access. So that, right. those assets. So that's a lie. Uh, right there was other that, administrations, right, Brian, that actually were right. involved when it came to funds going to Iran for for certain reasons, yeah. right? So, she she yeah. says don't misrepresentation is, of the facts, is basically. What of she course, did. Yeah. she says don't is not a foreign policy. <laughs> Joe Biden's policies have funded Iran's attack on Israel. By the way, that is also not true. Again, how does she? She has to know this, but I guess her constituents love it when she goes after Biden. The assets were frozen, which means they haven't been able to use the funds. Marsha, you freaking liar. And then uh, there's Mike Johnson, Mr. Accountability Man, Mike Johnson. Very normal, by the way. Uh, he says the Biden administration's undermining of Israel and appeasement of Iran have contributed to these terrible developments. How has Joe Biden appeased Iran? What is Mike Johnson talking about? Uh, Gary Palmer, Republican chairman of the Republican Policy Committee, said Biden's weak foreign policy has put our Americans and allies in harm's way. Michigan Republican Representative Lisa McLean said Biden's weakness on the world stage continues to lead to widespread death and destruction. Uh, I didn't funny. I didn't hear her talking when Donald Trump sided with Vladimir Putin and was writing love letters to Kim Jong Un. Uh, but that wasn't weakness at all. Right. Uh, she said this is a major attack that cannot go unanswered. We must never waver in our support for our allies in the Middle East. Uh, has Joe Biden wavered on his support? Uh, but I do want to explain this to all of you right wing idiots out there that are blaming Joe Biden for the Iran missile attacks, which, by the way, has no direct correlation to Joe Biden. I'm wondering, since Donald Trump said Iran never would have launched drones against Israel if he was president, I just have a question to all you right-wingers out there that are going after Joe Biden. Uh, who was president in January of 2020? Because just like the COVID virus, Trump covered up the seriousness of it, and he just gave us good talk, right? He, happy, happy, joy, joy talk. Well, guess what? When Trump was president, the strike was the largest ballistic missile attack ever against Americans. And initially, the U.S. was not willing to concede the seriousness of the attack under Donald Trump. While it initially assessed that none of its service members were injured or killed, 
The U.S. Department of Defense ultimately said that over 110 service members had been diagnosed and treated for traumatic brain injuries, mainly concussions, from the attack. And some of them were later awarded the Purple Heart. But I'm wondering, that attack where over 110 service members got traumatic brain injury and Donald Trump was downplaying what took place, where were all these right-wingers? Were they blaming Donald Trump for these attacks? No, of course not. There was complete silence. So where were all of you right-wingers back then? But now you want everybody to be led to believe that this was all Joe Biden's fault, that the Hamas terrorist organization that has been around since the mid-'80s, they decided on October 7th, hey, you know what? Donald Trump isn't president of the United States. Joe Biden is. So let's go in there and let's kill a bunch of Israelis. Republicans on the MAGA side will lead you to believe that that's the case. They are nothing but hypocrites. These are nothing but lies. And Donald Trump downplayed what took place in January of 2020 the same way he downplayed COVID under his administration. So Numchuck and PTL Nation out there, I'll contribute to Brian Shapiro's dripping sarcasm across the board in that uh, latest uh, latest rant that she's went on, Brian. It's true. And I will say this. Uh, yeah, the idea that Republicans up on the Hill, uh, especially ones that support Donald Trump, are going to blame Joe Biden for this situation. We just described at the top of the segment the reason why mm-hmm. Iran took those t- uh, took that step to uh to to uh, to basically send, you know send ballistic missiles uh, toward Israel. We just explained the the reasoning why. It's not that we agree with it. Obviously, we do not. But we are giving the reason why it took place, and it has nothing to do with Joe Biden or the United States of America. It is a, a situation again when discussing conflicts in the Middle East, particularly with respect to Israel, uh, Palestinians, and of course Iran. Things can get complicated. Things can get uh, – there can be multiple reasons why things happen to be true, and there can be ways that uh, we need to sit back and take a look at it and address it and try to rectify the problem. And one of those ways is not to just blanketly right out of the gate, Republicans, all right, and mag out there, come out there and just blame Joe Biden for everything and say that it's the Biden administration's fault. For everything. But unfortunately, in the climate that we do live in, from our American political climate, that happens to be the case. And uh, it's unfortunate. It really is. But uh, yeah, uh, at the end of the day, Brian, right? Um, You kind of described it. But I'll ask you the question flat out, Mr. Shapiro. What is uh, your ideal endgame when it comes to this situation with respect to Iran and the state of Israel? Well, obviously, it's a loaded question because it's not just Iran versus Israel. It's the entire Middle East and Gaza and everything in between and Hamas, well, no, no. which is, so, which so is funded I'll be, by— I'll, fo- I'll focus it then. So, I, again, I'll, 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 I want to narrow it down. I'm talking about this latest incident in which Iran, right, uh, had this attack on the state of Israel. I'm not talking about all the other stuff okay. that's going so on. Let me respond I'm to talking that. about what do you think is the me, ideal you know, end game okay, so after me, this attack so on Iran? Iran has already stated that, you know— uh, at least publicly, that they're done. You know, they're not going to be okay. sending any more yeah. missiles out. And, and this and they've already said why they did what they did, which is yeah. obvious, attack in Syria. Um, so Iran's done. If, in fact, Israel decides to respond in a lethal way, we're going to have World War III, and it's going to escalate. I don't defend Iran for anything. I don't defend them by the missile attacks over the weekend. I don't defend Iran for anything, a harboring terrorist, right. funding Hamas. They're despicable, and we should never be helping them ever. But I have to say this. Israel is better off not responding in this specific situation because if they do respond in the way that I think they might, more innocent civilians are going to die. The U.S., France and allies intercepted those missiles. Luckily, nobody was injured. That's great. That's a win for Israel. As Joe Biden told Benjamin Netanyahu, and Joe Biden's right. Normally, I wouldn't say this. Israel has the right to obviously defend themselves when it comes to Hamas. And they do have a right to defend themselves if they're attacked by Iran, which they were. I just feel like in this specific situation, they're better off holding their tongue, focused on Hamas, And Iran knows they're not going to win. 
if they decide to attack Israel and innocent civilian, civilians are hurt or killed, uh, Iran's going to be blown to smithereens. They know that. And while these people are crazy and they're anti-Semitic and they don't want Israel to, to exist and they probably want to kill as many Israelis as possible, they're also not stupid. They understand that these attacks were going to be, these missiles were going to be intercepted. They knew that. They were just doing it to make a statement. They weren't trying to kill innocent civilians. At least I don't believe they were in this situation. Yeah. And they knew that. So if a bunch of innocent people had died, I would feel differently about this. But they didn't. Well, all of us would, yeah. Um, so I think Israel would be better off right now, at least, to hold back, focus on Hamas, mm -hmm. and leave this one alone. That's my personal opinion. Do I think they're going to do that? I don't know if I trust Benjamin Netanyahu. I'm a supporter of Israel. I defend Israel. I'm not a big fan of Benjamin Netanyahu, and I don't, I'm, I'm not confident that he's going to make the right decision. You know that Joe Biden and that administration are hoping that Netanyahu does not fire back. So we will have to wait and see what happens. What I think they should do and what they will do could be two completely different things. But that's my take on this whole situation. And again, going back to what I said earlier, all these Republicans out there that are blaming Joe Biden, it, re it really is absurd. It's absurd and it's ridiculous. Um, um, and while all this is going on, yep. the Trump hush money <laughs> trial has begun in jury deliberations. And I do find this kind of funny because Donald Trump is always the guy that calls everybody low energy, right? He's low energy. She's low energy. He likes to use this term all the time. Meanwhile, this the orange turd Cheeto Jesus is sleeping in the courtroom in a criminal case, by the way. This is a criminal case. Uh, let me remind you, a criminal case. And he's facing, I believe, 31 counts, if I'm not mistaken. So this is Maggie Haberman, who I believe is a really good reporter from The New York Times. She's been inside the courtroom. As you know, Chris, they're not allowing cameras or audio, which I wish they did. Um, but Maggie Haberman, and there's some really good reporters inside the courtroom. And this is Maggie Haberman explaining how Donald Trump is falling asleep inside the courtroom. Yeah, I have to ask, you guys have been, at the Times, have been live blogging uh, this uh, event. And 40 minutes ago, you wrote an observation that, that uh, I, I was very surprised. Trump appears to be sleeping. His head keeps dropping down and his mouth goes slack. Tell us about that. Well, Jake, he appeared to be asleep. And, you know, he repeatedly his, his head would, would fall down. There have been other moments in other trials, like the, uh, the E.G. Carroll trial, which was around the corner uh, in January, where he appeared very still and seemed as if he might be sleeping. but. Then he, then he would move. This time, he didn't pay attention to a note that his lawyer, Todd Blanche, passed him. His jaw kept falling on his chest, and his mouth kept going slack. Now, uh, you know, sometimes people do fall asleep during court proceedings, but it, it's notable given the intensity of this morning and a lot of what was being argued. Yeah, that's rather surprising. What was well, not surprising to me, but I would say uh, allegedly very similar behavior to er any woman that's ever been intimate with Donald Trump, so it doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, ba -da -bum -bum. Low energy, very low energy. Uh, let me be very clear on this, right? <laughs> be very clear, Brian. Be very clear. Now, I believe he's going to be convicted of a crime here. I think 31 counts, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. He's going to be convicted on something here. And again, everybody on the far right will lead you to believe that it's George Soros and it's the Joe Biden DOJ and lefties, yada, yada, yada. Lefties going after him. Um, but with that being said, this is also going to be an extremely embarrassing case for Donald Trump and for his family. I mean, you know, listen, I don't feel bad for Melania Trump. She's the one who decided to get into a relationship with this despicable man. But we're also going to learn from another woman who he paid off, a Playboy model, I believe. Um, she's allowed to testify, and he paid her $150,000. Um, and these are two women, and I would imagine there's probably a couple extra digits on that with all the women that he's cheated on uh, while married to Melania. But Melania Trump's going to hear about this. Obviously, his family's going to hear about this. And the evangelical Christians are not going to care. Those who talk about sin, those who preach to us about how gay marriage is so horrible and drag queen reading to our kids is the earth is falling and transgenders are terrible and they're going to rape your kids. These are all the same people that are going to learn that two months after Melania Trump had Barron, Donald Trump decided to have unprotected sex, no matter how long it lasted, eight seconds or three minutes or whatever. And then after having sex, weeks before the election, 
decided to pay off Stormy Daniels. And a lot of people would characterize that as election interference, meaning he did not want the voters out there to find out about this sexcapade he had with Stormy Daniels. And this isn't the first woman he's done this with. So for the people out there that think that Donald Trump is completely innocent, for the people out there that think that this is George Soros, well, let's just see where the evidence falls and let the jury decide and let the chips fall where they may. If he's found innocent on all criminal charges, and I repeat, this is not a civil case. This isn't E. Jean Carroll, who a jury found that he was sexually liable for battery. You can define it as sexual abuse. The judge defined it as rape. But this is not a civil case. This is criminal, very different. And the prosecution has already asked the judge to find Donald Trump. And I think they only asked to find him like three grand. So it's not the amount of money. It's a standard in which you can't go after witnesses. You can't taint the jury pool. But a man like Donald Trump can't be told what to do. He's had yes people around him his entire life. He can't keep his mouth shut. But apparently he's falling asleep in the courtroom today. So we're going to wait and see how this whole thing plays out. Chris, but uh, yes, we are. I do believe it's um, it's unfortunate that we don't have a camera in the courtroom. I wish we did. Would have been great to. But but again, it's Sleepy Joe, right? <laughs> to the right, Sleepy Joe Biden, Joe Biden in the bunker. He's got Alzheimer's, right? Because all of you people are PhDs out there. I know. But yet Donald Trump, in what is an unprecedented former president criminal trial, that's running yeah. for president again. This is unprecedented. And on day one of the trial, the man is falling asleep in the courtroom. You know what? Let's just try Sleepy Trump. Sleepy Rapist Trump. That's going to be one of my new nicknames. Here's threw it out there. Yeah. He sleepy, it out. sleepy rapist, Next. rapist orange man. Okay. <laughs> sleepy Trump. For all you buffoons out there that uh, Sleepy Joe, Sleepy Joe. Donald Trump is falling asleep in his own trial. Criminal case. Hush money case. Sleepy Biden. He must have had a late night last night. I don't know. And I will toss this out there, Brian. Look, it's going to be, a will use the word challenging for the reporters on this case because, look, it's, it's day one. Maggie Hammerin got the scoop, right, talking about this situation with Donald Trump. But at the end of the day, it's going to be like a lot of trials. A lot of trials can tend to be tedious, right? They can be, they can be long. They can be, uh, you know, a lot of the same stuff going on over and over again. When O.J. Simpson's trial was going on back in 1995, I happened to be just out of college. I was actually working as a production assistant at a television station, and, one, and part of my job was to log actual, you know, the, the actual trial with mm-hmm. O.J. Simpson. And that was a situation where, yeah, you would get occasional bombshells, right, or occasional big news that was coming out. But, but a lot of it was also just tedious stuff, right? That was right. Just, it was just monotonous stuff that was going on. So all of you people out there that are thinking are hoping that, hey, when you're watching this trial and seeing what's going down, you know, with a former president, don't expect uh, to every single day, guys and girls and, you know, PTL Nation out there to be getting some kind of, uh, you know, hot button news story when it comes to, you know, Trump, Trump passing out or something extraordinary happening in the courtroom because yeah. it's just not going to be the case every single uh, day. Perhaps not. Uh, there were certainly plenty of moments in the OJ case. These are two very different cases, but I, I, I do look forward to hearing Michael Cohen's testimony. I do look forward yeah. to hearing Stormy Daniels' testimony and others. Here's what we're going to do. <laughs> We've talked about a lot with Chris here in this first segment. We talked about the Iran missile strikes, my thoughts on what Israel should or shouldn't do, Republicans that are blaming Joe Biden for the missile strikes. We spoke about that. Um, And we've also uh, spoke about the hush money case involving, you know, of course, the, the payment to Stormy Daniels. Some would call it election interference. Also, Governor Sununu and his statements uh, involving Donald Trump. I think it's a microcosm of, of really uh, so many in the Republican Party today. It doesn't matter whether this guy could rape somebody on video. They would still vote for him because he has an R next to his name. So now we're going to take your phone calls on it. You've heard our thoughts on it. Now it's your turn. Number to call if you want to be a part of the conversation is 702-221-7283. Again, that number, your chance to chime in, whether you're a MAGA supporter, whether you're anti-Trump. I think uh, it's fair to say Chris and I are very anti-Donald Trump. Uh, it's not Trump derangement syndrome, though. You have Trump fellatio syndrome, so let's let's put that one to bed right there. Uh, 702-221-7283, and again, that number to call, 
if you would like to be a part of the conversation. Your thoughts on the hush money case. It's day one of the trial. Donald Trump falling asleep. Maybe he was up all night uh, drinking with Rudy Giuliani. I don't know. Um, so we're talking about that, previewing this uh, trial, uh, day one today. And we're talking about the Iran strikes, missile strikes to Israel. Thank God nobody was hurt, which is a miracle. It's great. Uh, your thoughts on that as well. What do you make of Republicans blaming Joe Biden for these missile strikes? Again, that number to call is 702-221-7283. Be back in 90 seconds with your phone calls. It's Pushing the Limits right here on KSHB. My name is Hunter Kane, and I'm talking with you for a call to action for our veterans in Clark County. Who is Hunter Kane? Well, I'm a decorated combat veteran, veteran community leader, and candidate for Clark County Commission. Do you know, no veteran has served on the commission in nearly 30 years, which is why our veteran homelessness, unemployment, and suicide rates are out of control. So here's the call to action. June 11th, vote veteran, vote Kane for Clark County. Let's rally behind someone who's been in the trenches, who knows the sacrifices, and who's committed to making a real difference. Join the campaign by searching Elect Hunter Kane on social media or go to www.electhunterkane.com. Did you know that 99% of air conditioning issues start with airflow issues? Well, guess what? Pioneer Air has your back. They've been operating for 20 years in the industry within the Las Vegas area, large enough to handle all your air conditioning and heating needs, but small enough to know your first name. Pioneer Air focuses on preventative care, much like wellness checks for humans. They believe in wellness checks for air conditioning and heating systems to extend the life of the system you own. So what are you waiting for? Schedule your wellness check with Pioneer Air today. The number to call is 702-831-4840. Here's the best news. Mention this ad and you'll receive 10% off. Call Pioneer Air today, 702-831-4840. That number again, 702-831-4840. Who would have thought there'd be so many kids playing ice hockey in the desert? Jake Kelb's Hockey Foundation and the Las Vegas Ice Warriors, founded by Gina Yusufzai eight years ago, made it possible for families who can't afford the equipment and fees. Donate today at www.hockeyforkids.org and help us continue making a difference. Join us in supporting Jake Kelb's Hockey Foundation and the Las Vegas Ice Warriors, where every kid gets a shot at the starting line. Just a reminder, our website is www.hockeyforkids.org. Residents of Las Vegas Ward 5, are you ready for a brighter future? I would like to introduce myself, Dr. Erica Smith, your people's choice for city council, with a vision for progress and a fortitude to make it happen. I am committed to moving us forward. I am not just a candidate, I am a fighter for you. With myself on the city council, you can expect a real change and a community that thrives. Vote for Dr. Erica Smith because together we're building a better tomorrow. To learn more about me and my campaign, go to www.ericaforlasvegas.com, paid for by the Vote Dr. Smith Committee. Voters want safe gun reform, ban military assault weapons, including AR-15s, have universal background checks, and red flag laws. I am Eva Chase, a candidate for Nevada State Assembly District 16, U.S. Air Force veteran, college graduate, progressive independent candidate, fully transitioned transgender woman, former Lieutenant Governor candidate for Nevada in 2022, where I received 7,212 votes in the Democratic primary. Follow me on Facebook, X, Instagram, TikTok. Donate to my campaign bot fun account and stay progressive. All right, welcome back. It is Pushing the Limits on a Monday. Thank you so much for joining us. We got uh, Chris Wynn in the house. You guys support what I do. I want you to support our sponsors here and the people that uh, give us the opportunity to do what we do every day. Of course, I'm talking about Pioneer Air. Leo and the gang over there, uh, they've owned Pioneer Air for a while now, and the business has been around since the 1930s with summer right around the corner. It's already getting hot out there. You want to make sure your air conditioning system is working properly. You don't want it to go crap on you when it's 120 degrees outside. So here's what I want you to do. If you mention the name of the show, call Leo. I'm going to give out the number. You're going to get free scheduled maintenance for up to a year. 
It's like getting free oil changes for up to a year. Who wouldn't want to do this? There's no catch. Give them a call right now. Mention the name of this show. Say you want the free VIP year service, and they won't charge you for it. $150 value. 702-703-6346. Give Pioneer Air a call. Ask for Leo. 702-703-6346. Before we get to the calls, Chris, yeah, I'm getting into it. with uh, Dana Loesch, to me, has always been an evil witch. I've always called her that. Uh, she took money from the NRA to be their spokesperson. Uh, and she's one of those idiots that, you know, is in love with her guns and makes love to her guns. I would imagine probably a lot more than her husband. And uh, she and there's a reason why I bring it up her husband here. But, you know, she thinks more guns makes us safer. She's an idiot. She's a right wing idiot. And, and I've always said this about Dana. If you've ever listened to her on the radio, I don't care what you people think of me, whatever. She might be one, the least well, talented get, person yeah, ever that I've ever heard on the radio. And there's quite a few of them out there, but Dana Loesch is, is she's unlistenable. Anyway, wait, time out. So let me, let me get this straight. So Brian, you pride yourself as someone who doesn't normally get into it too much on social media, but you're about to describe how you are getting into it on social media. When did so I say I never, I don't pride a, myself. I mean, it depends on who it is. Uh, if it's somebody well, that has a following, I don't mind getting into it with them. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Chris Loesch is Dana Loesch's husband. Yeah. The only reason never why heard we, of him. right. The only reason why we know who he is is because of his wife. Um, well, we, we, and I talk about we other than you, those, me and myself and listeners well, out there, we don't know who Chris well, those, is. Well, uh, yeah, those, right. a lot of right-wingers out there know who Chris is because he's got a decent following on social media. Oh, really? And he does make TV appearances from time to time. So Chris Loesch takes to social media today, and I see this post. Chris says, if you are still supporting Hamas in Palestine, you are part of the group chanting death to Israel and death to America. Stop calling yourself America first if you align with that crowd. Um, I tend to agree with him. I think anybody that chants death to America is despicable. Okay, so no, no, so, I don't agree. No, look, it's it's a ridiculous statement. There are there are two separate things. There's support for a terrorist organization, and then there's Palestinians, okay, and Palestinian Americans who support innocent Palestinians. So the statement that he made is is not accurate. So I okay? understand. I'll be, I'll be so extremely I, clear on so that. So I understand what yeah. you're saying, but uh, well, of course you do because but, what I just said is right. But I, what I said is spot on. But but yes. But that's not why I bring up that tweet, even though I don't necessarily agree with everything he said in the tweet. Uh, I think people who 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 chant out "death to America" are despicable. So well, I yeah. responded. I responded in only the way I know how to. I said, Sorry, "Hey, yeah. Chris Loesch, <laughs> you support the group chanting Hang Mike Pence." Uh, are they hostages and patriots? Isn't the guy that you voted for or and you continue to support said they were hostages and patriots? So then I copied and pasted what he said. I said, stop calling yourself Ant uh, America first if you align with that crowd. There's a lot of people on the right, Donald Trump, who aligns with that crowd. Right. He got really defensive. He that, says, that's a shocker to me. Yeah. He said, nope, I was against people chanting, <laughs> and I posted it online. So you are either stupid, ignorant, or a liar. So I said, hey, Chris. Donald Trump called those people hostages and patriots. Can we find anything on your social media that called out Donald Trump? That's the guy who you support, and he's aligning himself with the people who chanted, hang Mike Pence. He actually went further. He's not only aligning them, he's complimenting them. He says he would pardon them. Yeah. He's calling them patriots, calling them hostages. Crickets. Crickets. Yeah. Crickets. Well, look, before we take the phone calls here, let me, let me chime in on this real quick. So on Friday— you kind of posed the question out there. You threw it out there. You said, you know what? You know what? And I'll, I'm kind of paraphrasing what you said. And correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm not accurately depicting what you said. When you talked to Nicole Mitchell about this, and you said, you, you basically said, hey, you know, uh, uh, I just, I'm not going to be able to figure out these people. I don't understand why, there's the, why the people out there will vote for someone like Donald Trump, right? Am I, am I wrong? That, that's kind of the way you just described it. Yes. And I'll answer your question very simply. You posed it a question, but you didn't really, nobody answered the question. Like, Nicole didn't answer it. And you didn't really uh, address an individual person to get the answer. I'll give you the answer. It's very simple. Because Donald Trump has an R next to his name, okay? Donald Trump's not a Republican, never has been a Republican, all right? But he has an R next to his name. Yes. And so, therefore, when Donald Trump was president between 2016 and 2020, what happened? Well, people like Mitch McConnell and Republicans and MAG out there and people on the right, you got some of the things that you wanted. So that's why, Brian, that they vote for him, yet— Despite the fact, as you pointed out on this show and you point out on every show, all of the things that Donald Trump does that are ridiculous or hypocritical or just bad, right? And some of the takes that he has and the racist views and the sexist views and the, you know, uh, the, the uh, views towards the LGBTQ community, all that stuff. 
they the reason why they're like they're, there's nothing to see here, right? And they vote for him is because they get things done. They get their they get their Supreme Court justices right. They get their their tax plans. They get the things that Republicans want done because Trump, even though he's not really an ideologue, like you think about Donald Trump, Trump, right? He's not an ideologue. He's not a guy who's who's like some staunch guy when it comes to his views on abortion or you know immigration. Although I mean, people maybe make the case that he does when it comes to immigration. The point being is he's not a hardcore guy when it comes to his ideology. He is a transactional individual, right? When you think about Donald Trump, he's transactional. He's like, I know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy. He's, he's someone who's, uh, you know, I'll, I'll get something for you, and then you should, in exchange, you should give me ultimate loyalty, right? So that is the reason why those people vote, continue yeah. to make a case to vote for Donald yeah. Trump. Anyway, Dana Loesch is yeah. fluffer. Chris Loesch getting into it with me on social media. You can look at the rest of the conversation. It is quite entertaining. Uh, we've been talking about a lot. Uh, of course, the hush yeah. money case, day one of the trial, uh, the Iran missile strikes, and uh, those on the far right that are blaming Joe Biden. And, of course, we're taking your phone calls at 702-221-7283. All right, let's get right off the bat. Here we go. Let's start off with MAGA Julie because, you know, a lot of people uh, have said start off with Julie. So why don't we do that? Hello, Julie. Hello, Brian. I would like you to explain to me what is the crime that is uh, that Trump committed in New York. Sure. Uh, so uh, instead of me actually explaining it to you, which I can, but I think it would be a waste of airtime, uh, there are 30, 31 crimes that the prosecution in, in the indictment that you could look that up for yourself. Now, you're somebody that's always said on this show, I did my research, I did my research. So I find it weird that all you have to do is a very simple Google search to see the alleged crimes that Donald Trump committed and, and, and the charges that were yeah, filed. Yeah, the charges, right? Why, 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 why have you, you not find out the charges? Why have yeah. you not done that? Why, why, why do you when you don't talk about the crime? Because I would like to know what I did. Crime I did. Trump First of all, committed. the possibility of election interference, uh, withholding information and paying somebody off before an election. That's one of the big ones. Uh, campaign finance violations, uh, where the money came from. Campaign uh, like, violation. Campaign campaign, fi violation. campaign, fi campaign finance what, violations. What do you mean Finan financial violations, Julie. Financial what, violations. What, 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 what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Okay, so Julie, I'm not going to sit here and explain to you every single charge. Aspect, right? You're yeah. the person that always. No, no, no. It's specifically, the financial. Uh, okay, uh, part, I will explain it. I will explain it in brief, Julie. You can't take okay. campaign okay. donations and use it for certain things. In this situation, which the prosecution is claiming, and I guess there's evidence to prove that, you can't use some uh, campaign contributions like people like you who will send money to Donald Trump and then use it to pay off yeah. a porn star because you had unprotected sex with her and you don't want the public to know about it. That is against campaign okay. finance. It's yeah. very, finance. very simple. Okay. And very specifically okay. $130,000, uh, Julie. Okay. May, so. I, may I opine? May I opine? May you what? I'm what? sorry. Can I talk? Okay. So are we going to prosecute Imar Ola, uh, Omar Ilan for paying her husband $1.1 million to her firm? I'm sorry. Can you explain your whataboutism question again? Because oh, I didn't Ima get it. Ola, Omar Ilan. Omar Ilan used campaign money to pay her husband. Yes, it's called, it's called, are we yeah, going she's after saying Ilhan Omar Ilan? Okay, Ilhan. Julia, I'll help you out. Julia, well. Julia I'll help you out. Okay, so she's okay, she's saying we she's, have bias. okay, Julie, we have Julie, 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 right. Julie. I, I don't I mean, understand. I I can. I'm having trouble so understanding what saying, you're saying. Brian, so. I'll explain it to you. So she's saying Ilhan Omar allegedly paid money to her husband or something like that. Okay, so my my answer to Julie would be: Where are the charges from any uh, aspect of the Justice Department or any uh, you know prosecutor? Yeah in which the representative Omar has been charged with a crime. That's the thing. I so here's the reality, Very Julie, and I'll answer. Say, I'll answer it, Julie. And here's yeah. the reality. Yeah, Julie, Julie, I'm talking oh, now. Julie, Julie, this is the point where I talk now. Okay? And she just ignores. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's okay. She could ignore. Yeah. Because uh, I just potted her down. Okay. My go-to. <laughs> uh, so, Julie, here's the bottom line here, and, and I'm going to allude to what Chris just said. Yeah. The bottom line here is that Chris uh, just said is that Donald Trump is in a courtroom today. Because yes. there was actually enough evidence to indict yes, him, exactly. and he's facing criminal charges. Yeah. Now, you could think in your MAGA head all you'd like, and by the way, I'm not a defender of Ilhan Omar. Yeah. I don't like her at all. But to defend her in this situation, she hasn't been charged with a crime. She hasn't been indicted. So you can say whatever you want, throw it at a wall and hope it sticks, but the bottom line here is that Ilhan Omar has not been charged 
with a crime. And I'll tell you what, if and when she is charged with a crime, we'll talk then about I'll it, right? be happy to yeah. talk about it, Julie, and I appreciate you calling in. As always, your whataboutism is wonderful. <laughs> 702-221-7283. We have one phone line that's open. Let's go to Roy. Roy is next up on Pushing the Limits. What's up, Roy? Hi, guys. How you doing? Good, Hi, Roy. This is about the fifth time I had to follow Julie on a phone call. <laughs> Uh, a couple of things. One, let, let's start with Chris Sununu. Okay. 51%. I mean, the, the man is obviously gutless, and he's got his facts wrong. I watched the interview with George Stephanopoulos on day. He's a disgrace. Mm-hmm. And the thing that gets me, I know there's a lot of stupidity out there. That's very obvious. But the Republicans in office who support Donald Trump, they're not stupid. They know what they're doing, and that's what makes it so much worse. Yeah. Yeah, Roy, they're playing the politics right. game, right, Roy? That's what they're doing. They're playing the game. Well, that's a problem. And, yeah. and how do you get rid of it? I mean, he talked about changing the culture. What are the Republicans worried about? They're going after abortion. They're going after gays. They're going after trans. Why don't they try govern? They talk about the border. They had a plan for the border that everyone was willing to go along with. You know, Donald what? Trump said don't do it. And, Roy, and here's something interesting because you mentioned something that I wanted to bring up. You mentioned abortion, right? Donald Trump isn't owning any of this. What I mean by that is he is the reason why Roe versus Wade was overturned. Yes, I understand it was the Supreme Court, but it was Donald Trump that put these guys like Kavanaugh, Barrett and others on the Supreme Court. Donald Trump is the reason. Now, he can make the excuse or say, well, it's up to the states. What happened in Arizona and what happened in Alabama? Yes, it's conservative Supreme Courts in that state. I understand that. But it doesn't happen if Donald Trump doesn't overturn Roe versus Wade with who he appointed to the Supreme Court. Donald Trump has to own this, whether he likes it or not. And his excuse of let's just leave it all to the states, it's on him. But Brian, I'll address but but Brian, I'll address Roy Roy, I'll address your questions because you got you pose some very valid questions right there, and I'll respond to your questions. You know, this is going to be a House of Representatives that is by the way they've been land based right for the past uh, a couple of years uh, going back to basically when Biden was inaugurated because of what Roy because of what Brian Shapiro because of their inactivity because they haven't done anything yeah. this House of representatives is historic right. when it comes to not doing anything Jim Jordan right? his so entire career unreal. hasn't passed yeah. one bill yeah. and there are Republicans that, oh Jim Jordan he's doing a great job why you think him and, and Comer have done a good job in trying to get the Biden crime family Jim Jordan has done nothing except enable children to be raped that's what Jim Jordan is known for in his life he's done nothing else these Republicans they, do nothing and they talk about impeaching you after all you impeach Trump nobody's done what Trump has done do you know if he gets convicted of any felony he can run for office, but he can't vote for himself. Yeah, well, you know what? They got to change that. I mean, if you're a convicted Absolutely. felon, you, you, nobody in their right mind you can't, this could possibly happen. Roy, you're 100 percent correct, and I appreciate your call. If you're a convicted felon, you shouldn't be allowed to be an assemblyman or assemblywoman, let alone the president of the United States. You know, convicted felons can't even vote. But you're saying that a convicted felon, which I do believe Donald Trump will be a convicted felon, uh, the fact that he can actually be the president or even run for president is absurd. 702-221-7283. 702-221-SAVE. Let's go to Nelson. Nelson is next up on Pushing the Limits. Hi, Nelson. Hey, Nelson. Hello. Hello. Listen, we have a former president in a courtroom defending himself uh, over election interference. Let's call what that trial in, in New York, what it really is. It's not the hush money trial. It's the election interference. Mm-hmm. And then we have a current president who is in the Situation Room trying to keep this country out of another conflict between Israel and Iran. So the striking differences are there. And I have a new name for the Republican Party. Okay. They are the, they are the Republican Party because they can't govern. Yeah. They are allergic. <laughs> and, 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 one of their, and one of their members on the House, uh, Representative Chip Roy, yeah. he said, what does – he said, name me one thing this party has done so I could go back to my constituents and campaign one thing not one person went up to that podium Mm. and then he also called out the former president yeah he said about the border he said millions of people went in there under Trump and he did nothing but look the real wall that Trump cared about it wasn't that southern border wall 
It was Wall Street. That's the Green Wall. That's mm-hmm. what he cared about. He fooled everybody. Very, well, that was the real wall, and he Wall con- Street. And he continues to fool everybody. These people are duped. I don't know. If, I, I don't. I don't even know. Uh, you can't convince these people anymore. I mean, I had a conversation with a staunch Republican lady living here in Las Vegas at a baseball game the other day, and we're having a conversation. And by the way, this is a woman who's been the victim of a sexual assault. Brutal. I know the story because she wrote a book about it. Yeah. And, I, and a very nice woman, by the way. And I said to her in a very respectful conversation, I said, how could somebody like you, an educated woman, who's the victim of a horrible sexual assault, support a guy who is a liable sexual abuser? <coughs> 26 other women uh, have accused Trump of, of, of sexual assault. Or I said, how could you? I just want to know. How could, and, and you know what she said to me? She looked at me and she goes, well, Joe Biden sniffs children. And I'm like, that's insane. How could you even have? I, and I was shocked. I'm like, how could I have a conversation with you when you talk like that? Uh, it's just it, it's really hard. And I'm having conversations with people on social media today. Don't ask me why. And well, you know, they're calling well, they're calling Joe Biden a pedophile. And I'm like, well, listen, well, listen. Didn't Trump say he loved the poorly educated? He does. He said he said that he does. He, he insulted all of his fan base. Yeah, well, I don't know if that's true, though. It. To Donald Trump's credit, I don't I, to his defense. I don't know if that's true, though, because, you know, um, he certainly doesn't love his kids, or at least Uday and Kuse, also known as Eric and Donald Trump Jr. We know they're not very smart. So if that was the case, he would love his two sons. And I'm not sure that's the case uh, anyway. You know, <laughs> I'll end with this, guys. Yes. I'll end with this. You yes. know, when it comes to Trump and Biden, you know, Trump's kids are jealous of Hunter Biden. Listen, no one's perfect in this world, but at least they know that Hunter Biden has a more deeper connection and relationship with their father That's true. Than, 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 than Trump's kids have with his. Because That's true. with Trump's yep. kids, whenever you talk with your father, there's always a transaction involved. You're right. There's never any yeah. any type of or, compassion or empathy for his own kids. Yeah, so or, or that's a real difference. He treats his kids like he treats porn stars after he has eight seconds of sex with them. Uh, always a transaction. And, at the and, and, the, and the last thing, guys, I'll say is this, too. With yeah. Sleepy Joe, remember that name, Sleepy Joe? I do. Oh no! Oh, de- oh, definitely, Nelson. We do. Yep. <laughs> for the past four, listen, for the past, for, for for the duration of this administration, the American people, for once, were able to sleep at night knowing that we don't have no damn sicko in the in the White House. Uh, amen, my friend. I appreciate the phone call. Thank you so much. Uh, Sleepy rapist uh, is in a courtroom today. Seven zero two 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 one seven two eight three. Let's go to Anthony, who's next up on pushing the limits. What is up, Anthony? Hey, Brian, how y'all doing today? Good. Like everybody doing good. Brian, I just want to say one couple of things. Sure. Here's a guy that's supposed to be wanting to be president, and he can ignore being in courtroom today for his own doggone purposes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How can he run the president for us? Sleepy Trump. Sleepy so rapist. That's what yeah. we don't want to do. He ignores our own constitution. He has no respect for it. Yeah, you're right. You it know, just makes me think about this country. Like, where are we at right now? Right, guys? Like, what are we talking mm-hmm. about? The idea that a guy that's one of the two choices most likely to be president of the United States in just a matter of, what, six or seven months yeah. right now is in a criminal court case in a courtroom defending himself, essentially. That is and, and yeah, I, I mean, I can say it, right, guys? I can say it. It is unprecedented that this this situation has 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 played out like this. What do you it's think? What do you yeah. think, Anthony and Chris? What do you think yeah. MAGA's out there would say? And by the way, Joe Biden hasn't been indicted. He hasn't committed any crimes. There's no evidence of that. But I'm just putting a hypothetical out there. Yeah. What do you think they would say if Joe Biden was in a courtroom <laughs> on day one of a trial, which is I think is a serious trial? And he was falling asleep in the courtroom. Funny, all these people out there are calling, you know, they've been calling Biden Sleepy Joe, yet Donald Trump is falling asleep in the courtroom in a criminal case. What do you think of that? That, that, man, that, man, just, that man just said it. The guy that just hung up. He just, he just spelled it out. He brought it right on out. Yep. You know, and, 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 and all I hear... I got a buddy, man. I love him dearly. But mostly all of them say the same thing. You know what it is? Well, I was doing a lot better when Trump was in. <laughs> doing better what? You had a guy on your phone which you talked to who claimed he was a businessman. And when we were doing, we were doing, we're, 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 we're
weren't we doing so much better, Anthony, when the entire country was in shut down? 2020? Yeah, we Everybody were doing, was doing so we were, much better. We were right? doing so much yeah. better when 5,000 people a day were dying of COVID. Every business was closed. I'm driving down the strip, and the entire strip is shut down. Yeah, we were doing so much better when everybody was being put on ventilators and dying in hospitals. And then Donald Trump was bragging about all the ventilators he, he, he put out yeah. there throughout the country and how he shut down the country, and, and nobody could have handled it better than him. Yeah, we were doing so much better. Tell your friend he's a moron. Uh, tell him Brian Shapiro called him a MAGA buffoon. 702-221-7283 is the number to call if you'd like to be a part of the conversation. Let's go to Gary. Gary is next up on PTL. What's up, Gary? Hey, Gary. First of all, I agree with you about uh, Israel in this specific case. Yep. But more importantly, Howard Stern wants me to relate this to you. Every Monday you need to bring in uh, a transgender nurse to take – Chris wins blood pressure and temperature. Uh, uh, you could be a transgender one day and next be normal and let the uh, why a transgender though? That probably be, uh, Gary's Gary. That's probably good radio and good video, right, Brian Shapiro? If, if we did that, why but, a uh, transgender though? I yes, don't understand. I don't know. That. Yeah, that was you know, uh, what, what, yeah. yeah you, what because are we? it's Howard Stern. Uh, oh yeah. It's, by the way. It's, it's bring a little entertainment and, and mix mm. it up. Chris wins. I, I, I thought he was going to get all angry and stuff. I was going to tell him to keep the jello shirt on. Uh, yeah, well, he's going I, to keep it on. I got to admit, Gary, Gary, I got to admit. There, I mean, I'm trying to take steps, Gary. Gary, I'm trying. Gary, I'm well, trying with all great, my heart to take steps Americans. to calm down Gary, a little can bit, I ask you a question, Gary? calm down a little you bit, to relax a little bit. Gary, I'm I have to, to. Gary, I have yeah. to ask you a question, Gary. <laughs> if you had to take a poll of all the women in this country, would they rather see Donald Trump with his shirt off or Chris Wynn? Be honest. Oh, it's definitely me. This is above my pay grade. And I'm not even uh, being, I'm not even being, other, but other, Gary, I'm not even being arrogant. Not a it's question, definitely me. This was not a <laughs> question for Chris Wynn. We I know, know he's biased. Well, I'm answering the question <laughs> Gary, for everybody. I know, but let Gary answer it and don't, please this don't. Is, I'm going to fine you $3,000. You're tainting no, the jury it's pool. unanswerable question. No, it's very answerable. Answer the question, Gary. Come on. Pretend you like I short, stocky guys. The radio, that radio show host with no shirt on. What's the name? Oh. Um... Dana, uh, uh, Dana Loesch. What'd you call her? Uh, oh, you're talking about Pat yeah, McAfee? Sounds like you he have, doesn't have, no. not have a shirt on. He has a like tank top on. Major differences oh, in okay. opinions. Pat McAfee. Uh, All right, Gary. Well, I'm I appreciate, I appreciate your honesty, Gary. <laughs> uh, I would rather see Donald Trump with his shirt off. There's Just, a female yeah. radio host that does shows with her shirt off. Dana, um, he was referring to Dana Loesch. Oh, does he? She yeah. does not. Seven oh. I wish she did. Seven oh two 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 one seven two eight three. And again, the number to call if you'd like to be a part of the conversation. Seven oh two 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 one. Save. Let's go to Kaba, who's next up on Pushing Limits. What's up, Kaba? Hi, Brian. How are you doing today, brother? Good, man. What's on your mind? So I, want, I only have three things to say today. Okay. Let me start number one. To the MAGA men and trolls who are attacking Jojo Siwa and other women and are mocking them for stuff that they can't control, you are pathetic. You are disgusting. You are an utter joke. So that's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, for why would you vote for a, a man who is who has been held... Like Brian said, liable of SA. The fact that any of you do that shows what kind of person you truly are. Mm -hmm. And you are an utter disgrace to this entire nation. And yeah. third and final thing I want to say is, Brian, I'm coming to Las Vegas in June. So I'd love to meet you guys. That would be great. But anyways, those are the three things I want to say. Well, thank you for the call, Cub. I, I appreciate you. And yeah. uh, I got to tell you, man, uh, I, I'm looking forward to covering this hush money case because I – personally believe that it's going to be damning for Donald Trump. Listen, we had Anthony Scaramucci on the show uh, on Friday. He believes that uh, he said on the show that Donald Trump's going to be convicted in this case. He's going to be campaigning with Joe Biden. And uh, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. But the jury selection is underway. The questioning is, is quite interesting, by the way. But Unofficial boy. polls uh, on social media. Brian Shapiro on the Facebook page of Occupy Democrats, Democrats and, of course, PTL Nation. Uh, uh, Lori chimes in, says, uh, absolutely rather see, see win with the shirt off than Donald Trump. I mean, so, I'd rather not there's see one vote. either. There's one vote. I'd rather, one not, vote right I'd rather not see either. I'm just pointing out, hey, I'm putting up the numbers out there, Brian Shapiro. But okay? the reason yeah. why. And, of course, yes, we understand you would not want to see that. In the, in the same respect that I would not want to see that if we're talking about you. And the reason why I'd rather see Donald okay. Trump with his yeah. shirt off is so I can talk about it on the air and see what Melania, funny. Yeah. Melania Trump uh, has had to deal with over the years. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's here nor there. So we've been talking about a lot. I don't know how Israel is going to respond 
Uh, how do you think Israel's going to respond? We'll get to that next. Uh, what I think and what you think and, and what they do could be completely different, but we'll certainly talk about that. It's day one in the hush money trial involving Donald Trump, the payment to Stormy Daniels. We're going to get more into that and dive deeper into that as well and much more to get to. How should Joe Biden respond? Well, he's already responded. Do you agree? Do you disagree with that? We'll get into that as well. The number to call if you want to be a part of the conversation. We're taking more calls on the other side of the break. 702-221-7283. And again, that number if you want to be a part of the conversation. 702-221-7283. I got to tell you before we go and take a quick break here. My favorite gaming bar in town. I know Chris is in agreement with me on this one. It's Jackson's Bar and Grill located at Flamingo and Jones. I've had some of the best lunches I've had in my life over there. I'm telling you, the food there is awesome. It's tremendous. Uh, the bartending is great. Uh, the, the employees are awesome. The gaming is great. And as you know, Chris, actually, didn't wasn't it true, Chris, that you just won $250 in slot play during a Vegas Golden Knights game? As I heard Judge, a rumor. As Judge Smales from Caddyshack would say, Brian Shapiro is top notch. Okay. <laughs> when you talk about Jackson's Bar and Grill, no question about it. Yes, the promotions are outstanding. So I was there for the Vegas Golden Knights game the other night. Mm -hmm. And they have a promotion where uh, after the in the second intermission between the second and third periods, there's a promotion where you can actually shoot a puck into the net there and pl and play for free play. You have a chance to shoot for $500 in free play at a longer distance, and then there's a mid-distance that's $250 free play. See, when I went back to my high school Look hockey days, my friend. <laughs> Fired that into the net. There it is right there, baby. <laughs> VGK scoring goals, C win scoring goals at Jackson's Bar. Can I Hill, ask you a question? And getting two hundred fifty dollars in free play. Was your shirt on or off? My shirt was absolutely okay. on. Wanted to be clear. All right, on that. because okay. I didn't want to uh, wanted to be scare off the. Anyway, uh, I'm the glad you won there. So the point being, though, yeah, great promotions at Jackson's yeah, Bar. Yeah, that's Grill. awesome. From a uh, standpoint of, uh, they also have the pass the puck promotion, Brian. As yeah, well, they too. got a lot of good stuff. During Vegas Golden Knights games yep. and. Uh, as, as you pointed out, uh, all kinds of games from a gaming, all kinds of uh, yeah. cool games from Kino to Video Poker yep. and beyond. This is the longest Jackson's live read I've done in two years. Yeah. Well, uh, hey, yeah. hey, this is what we do. It's a modified <laughs> read in which I elaborate. <laughs> now, this is, Hadley, I know, I know you're very proud of your of your Jackson's experience. I am. I'm, 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 I am. I'm so, I'm, you know, this Jackson's is, Jack ad-libbing. Okay? We're, we're going ad-lib action. I am. Right now. Jackson's yeah. Bar and Grill located at Flamingo and Jones. Please check them out. It's a great bar. Uh, come by, say hello, tell them I sent you. All right, <laughs> we're going to take a quick break. We'll take more of your phone calls on the other side. Again, that number, 702-221-7283. What do you expect in this Stormy Daniels hush money uh, trial involving Donald Trump? That and more coming up next. It's Pushing the Limits right here on KSA. Did you know that 99% of air conditioning issues start with airflow issues? Well, guess what? Pioneer Air has your back. They've been operating for 20 years in the industry within the Las Vegas area. Large enough to handle all your air conditioning and heating needs, but small enough to know your first name. Pioneer Air focuses on preventative care, much like wellness checks for humans. They believe in wellness checks for air conditioning and heating systems to extend the life of the system you own. So what are you waiting for? Schedule your wellness check with Pioneer Air today. The number to call is 702-831-4840. Here's the best news. Mention this ad and you'll receive 10% off. Call Pioneer Air today, 702-831-4840. That number again, 702-831-4840. My name is Hunter Kane, and I'm talking with you for a call to action for our veterans in Clark County. Who is Hunter Kane? Well, I'm a decorated combat veteran, veteran community leader, and candidate for Clark County Commission. Do you know, no veteran has served on the commission in nearly 30 years, which is why our veteran homelessness, unemployment, and suicide rates are out of control. So here's the call to action. June 11th, vote veteran, vote Kane for Clark County. Let's rally behind someone who's been in the trenches, who knows the sacrifices, and who's committed to making a real difference. Join the campaign by searching Elect Hunter Kane on social media or go to www.electhunterkane.com. Buying or selling a home is a huge life event that requires guidance from an expert in the industry and community. My name is Blake Wynn. You may recognize my name as my grandfather was the best governor the state of Nevada's ever had. Growing up in Las Vegas, I've come to know this community intricately. Now, I am raising a family here as well. So I understand all the issues impacting our home and quality of life. As the top realtor for the number one real estate team at Keller Williams, you can have confidence in my experience, knowledge, and track record. When it comes to buying, selling, or investing in real estate, choose a name you can trust and someone who understands the community you call home. 
Call Blake Gwynn today and experience the difference of a trusted expert. 702-540-3311. Who would have thought there'd be so many kids playing ice hockey in the desert? Jake Helps Hockey Foundation and the Las Vegas Ice Warriors, founded by Gina Yousafzai eight years ago, made it possible for families who can't afford the equipment and fees. Donate today at www.hockeyforkids.org and help us continue making a difference. Join us in supporting Jake Helps Hockey Foundation and the Las Vegas Ice Warriors where every kid gets a shot at the starting line. Just a reminder, our website is www.hockeyforkids.org. Residents of Las Vegas Ward 5, are you ready for a brighter future? I would like to introduce myself, Dr. Erica Smith, your people's choice for city council with a vision for progress and a fortitude to make it happen. I am committed to moving us forward. I am not just a candidate, I am a fighter for you. With myself on the city council, you can expect a real change and a community that thrives. Vote for Dr. Erica Smith, because together we're building a better tomorrow. To learn more about me and my campaign, go to www.ericaforlasvegas.com, paid for by the Vote Dr. Smith Committee. Voters want safe gun reform, ban military assault weapons, including AR-15s, have universal background checks, and red flag laws. I am Eva Chase, a candidate for Nevada State Assembly District 16, U.S. Air Force veteran, college graduate, progressive independent candidate, fully transitioned transgender woman, former Lieutenant Governor candidate for Nevada in 2022, where I received 7,212 votes in the Democratic primary. Follow me on Facebook, X, Instagram, TikTok. Donate to my campaign bot fun account and stay progressive. Hey everybody, are you struggling to find a pizza place that reminds you of Brooklyn? That true blue New York style pie? Well, worry no more. Stallone's Italian Eatery Pizza is a knockout. We're located at 467 East Silverado Ranch Boulevard, just off of Premier Road, half a mile east of South Point Casino, just minutes from the Las Vegas Strip. Come by and grab a slice of pie. Plus, check out our Brooklyn-inspired Italian cuisine. Our sandwiches are super hero, that is, because why be a sub when you can be a hero? Stallone's Italian Eatery is here to serve you phenomenal food, Vegas. Forget about it. All right, welcome back. It is Pushing the Limits on a Monday. Thank you so much for joining us. We do have some sports to get to at the bottom of the hour. Uh, Masters champion Scotty Scheffler, BGK Hockey, the NBA playoffs are about to start. So a lot to talk about. Chris Wynn joining us in studio. But for those of you like Julie, Mega Julie, bless her heart, uh, if you really don't understand what Donald Trump is facing in this hush money trial, which, by the way, began today, jury selection, uh, Trump was charged last year with... 34 felony counts. Let me repeat that. 34 felony counts for falsifying business records, which I explained earlier, for his alleged role in the hush money scheme before the 2016 election. Now, of course, Trump's plea did not guilty. Um, you know, listen, there's a lot at stake here. It may be the only case to face a jury before the election and could face jail time if he's convicted. Do I think he's going to get jail time? Probably not. Do I think he's going to be convicted? Absolutely, I do. Um, and we're now learning that Donald Trump is using a consulting firm that deals with picking jurors to help him in this case. Uh, it's almost impossible to find a juror who doesn't know who it is impossible, doesn't know who Donald Trump is, doesn't know anything about this case, doesn't know who Stormy Daniels is. So uh, he's facing an uphill climb. The problem that the prosecution has here is you find one MAGA Republican, one guy that, you know, is so pro Trump. Similar to uh, in this aspect to the O.J. case back decades ago, where you find somebody who's going to find O.J. Simpson innocent no matter what the evidence shows. So it's always an uphill climb for the prosecution. But, boy, the evidence here is overwhelming. Uh, from yeah. what I've heard from experts, uh, the evidence is going to be overwhelming. And it doesn't help him that Stormy Daniels is going to be testifying, that Michael Cohen, who, by the way, went to jail, the fixer, is going to be testifying. And another woman is going uh, has been allowed it just the judgment was made is going to be allowed to testify where Donald Trump apparently paid her off one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a playboy playmate uh, in, a, in a similar situation. Um, seems kind of pricey, right? Sleeping with yeah. two women for almost three hundred thousand dollars. 
he, wouldn't he be better off getting some escorts? I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm trying to help him out. I well, don't know. well, the law team, the prosecution is going to have to do their due diligence, right, Brian, when it comes to jury selection and make you know and uh, just cr- create a situation, right? And by the way, the the defense as well too is going to have to uh, is going to be involved in this process. It is a process, right? So uh, it, when it comes to that and. Uh, and expectations are what that it's going to be a jury of his peers, right? And and uh, you're correct when you say you know in the state of New York it is difficult unless you're living under a rock and you pay no attention to social media or news outlets of any kind, not to be aware of the exploits of the former president of the United States. It is yeah. kind of outrageous and I, ridiculous I to pl- think that's the case. But 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 hey. This is America, and this is what our justice system is about, and this is how we operate. So we'll see what goes down. I want to play this Governor Sununu clip again (laughs) because, to me, it's the short one. And to me, it's exactly where so many within the Republican Party are at today, where it doesn't matter what Donald Trump is accused of. And again, Governor Sununu is actually a guy who does believe that Donald Trump incited January 6th. He's been on record as saying that he's partially responsible for it. And Sununu is also a guy that says we need to move on from 2020. And he says Joe Biden's a free and fair elected president. So this is coming from a Republican that at least you start there. Most Republicans won't even say that. Uh, And it's a it's so so, again, I I speak to it again. It's such a microcosm as to where the Republican Party is at today, where they have absolutely no backbone. Uh, Listen to this exchange again between George Stavidopoulos and uh, Governor Sununu. America wants a culture change. So, 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 so just to sum up, you would you would support him for president even if he's convicted in classified documents. You support him for president even though you believe he contributed to an insurrection. You support him for president even though you believe he's lying about the last election. You support him for president even if he's convicted in the Manhattan case. I just want to say the answer to that is yes, correct? Yeah, me and 51% of America. Uh, again, a lie. Governor, thanks for your time this morning. Yep, thank you. Thank you for your time this morning. That was the end of the interview. But I, again, I want to be very clear. Just say yes and be a man. He has to say 51 percent. That's a lie. Donald Trump lost the popular vote to Hillary Clinton by millions of votes. He lost the popular vote by much more against Joe Biden in 2020. There's not one poll that would suggest that 51 percent of America supports Donald Trump. That is a lie. By the way, Republicans have lost seven of the last eight popular vote presidential elections. So Governor Sununu is a coward. He is a liar. And he's doing what most of these Republicans do is when you pin them in a corner, that is the answer they give. So I asked these Republicans, Chris, I think it's a fair question. What does Donald Trump have to do? Is there anything he could do that would you would say, not even that you would vote for Biden, but that you would say, you know what? I'm not going to support and vote for Donald Trump. Does he have to rape somebody on camera? Does he have to shoot somebody? I don't know if that would work because it was Donald Trump who said I could shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue. They would still support me. What does Donald Trump, does he have to sodomize a child? What is it that Donald Trump could or would do, if anything, that would get these Republicans to say, or MAGA Republicans to say, you know what, I can't vote for that guy? Well, because at this point, I don't know what it could be. Well, Brian, that's a hypothetical question, obviously, that you're asking. But just the fact that you're even, you know, tossing out those examples, isn't that kind of an indication of where we're at right now in America, right? That we're even talking about situations like this. Obviously, we go back to the, 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 the quote that he had. I can't remember if it was in 2016 or 17 or 15 or when he made it, when he made the comment that I could shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue and I'll still have people vote for me, mm-hmm. essentially, right? It has kind of come to fruition, right? There is, it, it kind of has become reality, right? When it comes to MAGA, especially MAGA, but with Republicans as a whole, it kind of has, right? So, and, we, we, and we've seen it actually happen. So, I mean, you asked the question, again, hypothetically like that, and the answer is, of course, I mean, he's not, the, the expectation is that Donald Trump's not an utter lunatic, right? He's not someone who I would characterize as a murderer. Uh, you know what I mean? So I, there's not going to be one of those extreme examples that you brought up that's actually going to come to fruition, right? That is actually he's actually going to do. But, I, I mean, but he's already done other things that are obviously on a lesser level, right? That, and, he's fa- and, and he's facing, what, 90 criminal counts now. One, one of the counts was dropped, right? So he's facing 90 uh, 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 criminal counts, right? 
He's facing 90. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, there are criminal things that he's facing that he has, is allegedly done, that he's going to be going on trial for. Yeah. And yet Republicans, again, I use this term. I keep using this term. I keep, it's, like, it's like I'm a broken record. Twisting themselves into pretzels, right? To make excuses, to rationalize, to explain away, or in some cases, just flat out ignore, right? They just flat out ignore those negative things about Trump because they want to either A, talk about how Joe Biden and the Biden crime family is doing these things, right? Like Julie was doing, right? Julie wants to talk about Ilhan. Uh, we're talking about Donald Trump's criminal situations that he's dealing with. And what does Julie want to talk about? Ilhan Omar, which she should be, you know, what about the Democrat that should be on trial? What about the Democrat who she think she thinks is uh, uh, is done some nefarious things, right? There's there's all kinds of situations in which MAGA and Republicans want to either deflect, rationalize or or just say, hey, uh, or in some cases, there are some people who are bluntly honest and actually say, I don't care about that stuff because I want things done for Republicans that are beneficial for us. Here's what yeah. the reality of the situation is. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you think about our DOJ. It doesn't matter whether you think Donald Trump is innocent. It doesn't matter whether you think these charges or, uh, you know, uh, and, and he's you know, going to go off scot-free on these. It doesn't matter what your opinions are. The bottom line is this. In this case, and I'm just talking about this case, let's forget about the other three cases for a moment. He's facing 34 felony counts. So you could think what you want. He's been indicted. He's been charged. And now the trial has begun. He cannot delay it further. Stormy Daniels is going to testify under oath. Whatever you think about Michael Cohen, he's going to testify under oath. Another woman is going to testify under oath. A woman who he paid $150,000 hush money. So that's the reality of the situation whether you agree or disagree. Now, if you want to sit here and say, and a lot of these MAGA Republicans do this to me all the time, and I'm sure they do it to some of you as well, Joe Biden's a pedophile, Joe Biden's a sexual abuser, on and on and on, it's very simple. Show me the indictment, show me the evidence, and then we can have that conversation. But last I checked, Joe Biden has not been indicted on anything. There's no evidence that he sexually abused anybody. Doesn't matter whether his daughter wrote in a book that she felt it might have been inappropriate to shower with her father. By the way, there are many fathers that shower with young children. That's not abnormal. So if anybody wants to make that case, just ask them a very simple question. Where are the charges and has it been proven in court? Well, guess what? It's the prosecution now that is attempting to prove in a courtroom, right now jury selection, that Donald Trump committed 34 felonies in this hush money case. We will see where the chips fall where they may, and we'll take it from there. Numbers to call, 702-221-7283. And again, the number, if you want to be a part of the conversation, is 702-221-SAVE, 702-221-7283. Let's go to Carl. Carl's next up on Pushing the Limits. Hi, Carl. What's going on? Yeah, hey, Brian, Chris. Listen, I get a—I don't know if you get the kick and the laugh, but I get out of it. Listening to a lot of these right wing shows saying when Michael Cohen's going to testify, here comes he's going to testify. He's a liar. He's a crook. He's a thief. He's a this. He went to jail for testifying to protect Donald Trump. The, the hush money was paid by Michael Cohen to uh, Stormy Daniels. But do you think it was his own money? No, it was Trump's money. And uh, the, the ridiculous thing is that. Uh, they call him on these right wing shows a liar and a cheat. And Michael Cohen is a, uh, uh, a complete liar. And these are all Donald Trump's, uh, he's who he was working for him and saying what he wanted Trump to Trump wanted him to say. And he went to jail for that. You use the right word, I'll tell you, Carl, when you talk about ridiculous, right? Because remember the interview with Brett Baer, where Brett Baer essentially lays out, right, Brian? Uh, you know, uh, basically a dozen, a dozen plus people that at one time were supporters of the former president, right? At, at one time had either worked for the former president and in some way, shape or form, a lot of these people had uh, gone through trials, right? Had been convicted of crimes and, and you know, were basically 
uh, Trump supporters, right, Carl and Brian, and people yeah, around yeah. that are considered quote unquote MAGA have just turned on them, and now they're just like he's a disgrace. Anthony Scaramucci, right? You have on the show normally, uh, uh, regularly. I'm sure a lot of people that are MAGA, uh, you know, just lamb based him as well too. Oh, yeah. It is, it is, it is kind of ridiculous, you know, how but, MAGA has kind of framed yeah. that whole situation. But do you guys think that Trump, he's going to testify under oath in a trial? He'll take the Fifth Amendment for everything because he knows he'll be caught lying, and that'll be a, a big crime. So you don't think he's going to testify on the road, do well, you? Well, Carl and Brian, I think that his legal team will probably, rightfully so, advise him not to testify. But, Carl, you know Trump, right? He probably does want to try. Brian, he probably does want to testify. So here's the thing. And, and it's probably here's going to be bad Donald, for him. Donald yeah, Trump but, has yeah. said over and over again in every case that he's going to testify, yeah. and, then he, and then he never does, so he's full okay. of crap. Carl, yeah. I appreciate the call. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Carl. You got it. 702-221-7283. Let's go to Fernando, who's next up on Pushing the Limits. What's up, Fernando? Hey, Fernando. Yeah, hey, guys. Um, you know, when I was um, charged with attempted murder back in the day and I was in the courtroom, I stayed up and listened to the judge, every word, and the lawyers, prosecution, my defense. I stayed awake, okay? So Those are serious him, charges, Fernando. Yeah, that's serious stuff, man. That must have helped you. That just... must have helped you beat the charges because you were awake. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the witness disappeared, so that helped a lot. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, um, yeah, he's facing, what, 34 in this one? Well, he better stay awake. Yeah, 34. You know? 34 well, his defense charges. team better stay awake, right? What would, hey, let me his ask lawyers you, better stay awake. Fernando, you know if you're the prosecution <laughs> and Stormy Daniels <laughs> is on the stand, what's the first question that you ask her? Uh, was it good? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I would ask, I would ask, I would ask, I would ask, uh, how long it lasted. That, that, that would be my first question. It'd be, and, and then the, uh, the defense would be like irrelevant. And they'd be correct. That'd be the correct. The defense would be absolutely correct. correct. How large is his member? And uh, Fernando, are irrelevant. you shocked that Brian would go down this road when it comes to the line of questioning I right here? I just want this That's, SOB this to be embarrassed. I want him to be yeah. embarrassed. Any, you know, Fernando, I want him to be embarrassed because he deserves to be embarrassed. I probably... I'd probably ask um, Mr. Mushroom. I mean, um... wow. yeah, if you saw the skit they did with Jimmy Kimmel, uh, uh, Jimmy Kimmel put out like eight or nine different sized mushrooms. And then he asked Stormy Daniels to pick which mushroom yeah. was identical. And the one mushroom she picked was like the size of my pinky. And I have small hands. So, yeah, that was uh, that was uh, one of the funniest skits That's I've ever seen. So and, I, and I love Jimmy Kimmel. And by the way, Evan Stone, who's done many of. Uh -oh. porn, on porn scenes with Stormy Daniels wants to be back in studio this week, so he definitely wants to talk about the Stormy Daniels. He knows Stormy Daniels very well, much, much knows him much more, uh, I guess, on a personal level than than than, than we do. Uh, yeah. So uh, anyway, yeah. thank you, Fernando, for the phone call. I appreciate okay, you, my friend. Take care. Have a Take good care, one, guys. Bye. You too. Take care. Glad you, gl glad you beat that murder case. Uh, 702-221-7283. Let's go to Patrick, who is next on pushing the limits. Hey guys. Hey Patrick. Hey, hey, Brian! It doesn't surprise me. You want to know how big Trump's dick is? So in your okay. mouth. So, 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 Look, sir. You can't, you, guys, hold on. on. So, Patrick, tighten up. Tighten up. I'm happy. Can't use those words. Hold on. on so, Patrick, I'm radio, happy dude? to have a conversation yeah. with you. I was making a facetious joke. Obviously, you didn't find it funny and you took it seriously, which yeah. is quite all right, Patrick. Patrick, I apologize if I offended you. So let me ask you, a, <laughs> if, I, if I can, Patrick, if you would like to have a serious conversation, I would. If you don't mind me asking, Patrick, we can move on now. Um, are you a Trump supporter, if you don't mind me asking? Do you, do you suck Trump? All right, okay, so obviously you don't want to have a serious conversation, are, sir. Are you, are you like uh, 11 or 12 years yeah, old, Patrick? We, we, got, an, we got an 11-year-old. you have a, a conversation yeah. like an adult, like we have a, a mature adult? We have an no. But anyway, that's yeah. Donald Trump's base, a guy who yeah. calls into the show who I don't even know what he was trying to say, but something sexual, and somehow if I make a joke about yeah. Donald Trump, they make it seem like I'm obsessed with genitalia or something, but uh, that would probably be Patrick because I think he— Probably, uh, and I guess uh, I'm guessing on this one, but Patrick strikes me as the guy who pleasures himself to a poster of Donald Trump every night before he goes oh, to you sleep. Went there. He buys. Sure went there, no he's got talking. a stack of sixty dollar Bibles in his bedroom. He's got a stack of them, by the way, uh, and he wears his Donald Trump gold sneakers very proudly. And he's also the guy that sent money to Donald Trump to help fight voter fraud. That's exactly the guy now who's probably on welfare, who complains about uh, the price of his eggs and bread 
but yet will buy sixty dollar Bibles because it says the word down the words of Donald Trump on it, and have uh, his wardrobe like he'll have like six thousand dollars worth of items in his wardrobe, for, yeah. you know that have uh, that are MAGA and Donald Trump uh, influenced, and then complain about the economy yeah. and complain about the price of it, eggs and milk. It's it is amazing. it is quite interesting. Isn't it? That would be yeah. like you know Chris Wynn complaining about the price of eggs when he loses all these twenty dollar parlays. I don't know anyway. Seven zero two 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 one seven two eight three. Let's go to Fair Brent. Point. Brent is next. What's up, Brent? Hey, Brent. Brent, are you there? I think we. I yes, are you there? Yeah, there go, go right ahead. We got you. Go ahead. Um, I find it interesting that all this happened with Donald Trump uh, because he was offering Stormy possibly a a uh, role on his TV show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. That that prop. By the way, I'm glad you brought that up, Brent, because that might come up in this in this. She trial. was going to be on The Apprentice. Yeah, back in the day. Yeah, so that and might have lured her in and said, "Hey, come visit me, and I may get you a role on my TV show." Isn't that like what? Isn't that what these writers? Quick like, pro quo, Brian Shapiro. Do you remember? Quick pro, pro, do you remember pro. Bill O'Reilly and like Bill <laughs> O'Reilly would lure these women to his hotel rooms? That scumbag. And desperately trying to get laid would say, yeah, we'll get you on my show. We'll do this. We'll do that. That scumbag Bill O'Reilly. And, you know, I remember Bill O'Reilly. Yeah. yeah and, then, you know, I, I got a bone to pick with Chris Cuomo. It's like I understand if you want to have Bill O'Reilly on like once or something. But why would he have like a sexual predator like Bill O'Reilly on his show all the time? Like, no, you know what Chris Cuomo's M.O. is, right? He has he wants to give the persona of I want to listen to everybody or I want to have a conversation yeah. with everybody, even though some people may be marginal when it comes to their credibility. But I just want to talk to them. That's hey, kind of Chris's thing. Hey, uh, but, do you do role playing at all? Have you, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry to ask you, caller. That's but a, that's uh, a weird would you question, mind playing? But, yeah. Would you mind playing uh, Stormy Daniels for a moment? And, and uh, which, can, can you can, would you mind doing? that for a moment can we do a little role playing i don't know about that all right well let's well let's <laughs> try put him in a weird spot Brian. i know well that's what i do i put people in weird spots you do you're so very I'm, good at that i'm donald Un- trump apparently she spots. ran around yeah. with a magazine of with him on the cover and spanking him on the ass yeah that's possible <laughs> Uh, so you do role play. No, I was going to be like, imagine what, imagine what Donald played. Trump. I did not. Imagine what Donald Trump said to Stormy Daniels weeks before the election or, or whatever, whenever this happened. And like, hey, Stormy, come back to my room. You know, I'd love to give you an opportunity to uh, come on Apprentice. Yeah. And, you know, uh, but 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 Donnie, aren't you married? Oh, don't worry about that. She already had the baby and she's been out of service for a while. <laughs> Uh, which, which <laughs> come, come to my, baby come, to my do come to my ho- escapade that come took to place. my hotel yeah. room. I'll show you all my orange makeup. I'll keep my shirt on, <laughs> and then imagine. It was in Lake Tahoe, right? Can you? Was yeah. it Lake Tahoe? Yes. Can yeah, you, was that, yeah. Was that yeah. the uh, ruin- amateur you're ruining, pro golf tournament? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The, the the century cla- uh, classic. Chris, right? Chris, Up you're there? ruining my role play. Yeah. Nobody I cares know. where it happened. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> and then imagine the moment where. Donald Donnie takes down his, his drawers. Like, imagine that. Mo- like, does Stormy Daniels want to throw up? Does she well, want? I want to throw up that because you're describing wanna, this in detail right now on the air. So does she, I do does throw she up, want to yes. run away? I mean, if I'm the prosecution, what was going through your mind, Stormy, the moment Donald Trump? Well, his I would away? imagine that she's seen some some stuff in her time. She's probably seen all kinds of crazy stuff, right? <laughs> I, I, I yeah. can imagine. Yes. Well, we're, in her line of work, yeah, you know, that's kind of par for the course, right? Uh, you yeah. see, yeah. well, yeah. we are going to find out the details. She's been around the block, right? Exactly, she, has, well, exactly, yeah. she has been around the block, but I don't know if she's ever been paid $120,000 in hush money to interfere in the election. So this is You a, know, and the one thing I will say against that point is that, you know, you were paid hush money and then you didn't hush I love that. I love that. Yeah, I love that. No, she definitely you were didn't. paid off to hush up, and you yeah. did not hush up. Yeah, good for her. Thank you. Uh, I, I, thank you so much for the call, my yeah. friend. I appreciate Peace you. And I, I'm sorry for putting you in a very have a awkward, good Monday. I'm sorry for putting you. You, you are very good at that. You put people very, in uncomfortable uh, positions. Well, I wanted him to play Stormy Daniels for a moment. He yeah. just didn't want to play along, but that's okay. Yeah. I understand. All right. So here's what I'm going to do, ladies. <laughs> we're going to take a break. If you want to continue watching the rest of the show, you got to subscribe to my YouTube page. At PTL Radio Show. At PTL Radio Show. And the reason why is because we have some sports to get to. Uh, I do have some political conversation when it comes to Greg Norman. 
when it comes to Jack Nicholas. Jack Nicholas has to do with Donald Trump. I'm going to talk about that when we come back. Greg Norman couldn't even get a comp ticket to the Masters. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Nobody wanted to help him. And, of course, the Masters champion, Scotty Scheffler, live golf and how it's been affecting golf in a negative way. So we're going to do that when we come back. Quick thought, too. Uh, big thanks, right, Brian, to a lot of people on social media, especially the Occupy Democrats, BTL, Facebook page. A lot of activity, Brian. A lot of uh, uh, heated back and forth when it comes to the yes. discussion of the topics that we have been going over Absolutely. today on your Monday. But if you want to watch the rest of the show, I suggest you go on my YouTube page, at PTL Radio Show, where we'll be coming back. My criticisms for Jack Nichols and why I say Jack Nichols can go fly a kite, uh, I'll explain why I say that when we come back. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. It's Pushing the Limits right here on KSHP. My name is Hunter Kane, and I'm talking with you for a call to action for our veterans in Clark County. Who is Hunter Kane? Well, I'm a decorated combat veteran. 